Hello, and welcome to the third annual Pewaukee Spelling Bee and Christmas Festival. I'm your judge, Judy. We are just a few days away from Christmas, and so all of our spelling bee words have to do with Christmas. This is the last round, so at the end, we are crowning a winner. Let's get right to the spelling bee action and meet the final contestants. We have Ima de Gratis, Buster Busted, and finally, Rex Brittle Fiddle. Uh, actually, my last name is pronounced Flippity Floppity Hoppity Boppity. Oh, it is not. It is not. Okay, every time you tell me your name is something else and I say stop it. Stop it right now. Excuse me. Never. Now, for our final round, each of you will be given the same word to spell. While one contestant is spelling, the other contestants will be wearing special hearing devices to make it impossible to hear. Whoever spells the word correctly wins. If more than one get it right, the fastest spelling time will be the winner. Do you all understand? You each get the same word, whoever spells it correctly and the fastest wins. Get it? So I win, right? No, you, you have to spell the word first. And up first is Buster. Now, no funny business, Buster. Keep it honest. Absolutely. My cheating days are completely over. I hope so. Now, your word is... What is... Who put this mirror here? Buster? What? That's crazy talk. You must have put it there to see how your hair looks from the back. I'm sure I didn't. Now. Your word is Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Let's see. Uh E M uh What what is that? What is what? Uh, nothing. It's just hard to see what the letters are, uh, uh in my head. Uh, uh, a T? Uh, I'm sorry. That's not... Uh, wait, wait. Five. Why are you looking so hard behind me? What? <gasps> what are you doing back there? I'm, a. Uh... Are you cheating with Buster? He said he would do the same for me, and it was a perfect plan as long as the judge didn't catch us. She just did. Oh, whoops. That's on you. Is it my turn now? No. You are both disqualified for cheating. This is horrible. I didn't even do anything. I was just looking. She was the one cheating. You didn't ask her to do that? Uh, I would like to sit this one out. My tummy hurts. Uh, don't even blame me or your tummy. You are both out. Cheating is wrong, and you both have disappointed me. It was practically mine to win. It was in the palm of my hand. Oh well, I'll just come back tomorrow and try again. There is no tomorrow. This is it. This is the finale. I'll just come back tomorrow. I have nothing else to do. Well, Rex... It's all on you. If you correctly spell the word, Rex, you are the winner. Rex? Oh, right. Someone gently tell him to take those off. Oh, is it my turn? Yes, spell the word correctly and you are the champion. Your 30 seconds begins now. The word is. So if I get this right, I win? Yes, the word. Will I still get to ask the definition and the origin and for you to repeat the word? Yes, yes, please. Your time is running. The word. But well, what happened to these two people? They cheated. Please, Rex, you're running out of time. The word is. Well, how'd you cheat? Is that why you borrowed my mirror? Rex, the word is. <laughs> Ah, fiddlesticks. And that is time. Well, we have no winner this year. 
again. And if they would have actually attempted the word, they would have asked for more information about the word, Emmanuel, which is one of the many words used in the Bible to describe Jesus. It means God with us. Jesus left heaven and came to earth to be with us. You'll hear more about that word, Emmanuel, in your lesson today. Until then, Merry Christmas. Good morning, boys and girls. This is Miss Cynthia. Thank you for joining me today. Today, we're going to finish our series on Jesus is, and we're going to focus on Jesus is Emmanuel. And so, boys and girls, this is probably, if not, the most important story in the Bible. And so, um, it's about Jesus. So, Jesus is, you know, we, we've learned in our previous lessons that Jesus is the Son of God. Um, he had the perfect life in heaven. Um, boys and girls, he was king of the universe. You know, he had everything he could possibly ever need. But, you know, Jesus decided to... He decided to leave heaven to come to earth and so you know he didn't come even though he was a king you know he didn't come to earth as a king no you know um, Jesus left left his throne left everything that he had in heaven and came down to earth as a baby as a little baby and he was born to a couple named Mary and Joseph and um, you know as we learned last week or the previous week uh, he was born in a stable in a barn and you know he was laid in a manger full of hay he wasn't born in a palace or a kingdom you know um, so that's probably not what you would imagine uh, uh, where a king would be born you know it's not much much of a life for a, for a king right you know and so boys and girls when when Jesus was born God was you know, he was excited um, about the birth of his son, Jesus. And so he sent the angels to appear to a group of shepherds, if we can remember, you know, in our, from our last lesson. Um, uh, a group of angels appeared to the shepherds out in the field. And so the angels said to the shepherds, don't be afraid. We bring you good news for all people. And so once the shepherds heard the good news, then they ran to see um, the baby king who had been born um, to take away the sins of the world. And so the shepherds went, um, they weren't the only ones to visit the new the new king named Jesus. You know, also um, several Magi, sometimes called wise men, followed a star that had appeared, um, the, the star had appeared the night uh, Jesus was born. And so they traveled uh, for many, many miles, you know, bringing, um, once he arrived, you know, they brought Jesus uh, gifts of, of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And so, boys and girls, there was a reason that Jesus came to earth. You know, the people of earth, um, unfortunately, they had turned away from God for, for many, many years. I mean, pretty much since since the beginning, they had, you know, turned their, their they had turned away from God and, and um, just uh, sinned and, and done all kinds of evil things. And boys and girls, Jesus knew that sin is what separates us from God. You know, and boys and girls, sin is, um, um, you know, uh, lying and stealing and cheating and, um, you know, um, just sin is just all kinds of wrong things, witchcraft and just, uh, just maybe things that you may not even be aware of right now because you're because you're so young. But as you grow, you're gonna um, just learn more and more and more that there's there's so much sin in this world, boys and girls. Um, healing and uh, just um, violence, hurting people. Um, there's just so so many kinds of, of of sins out in this world, boys and girls. Um, and so Jesus came. Um, because he knew that the only way, the only way that we could be with God, because we're separated uh, from him by sin, that the only way, um, boys and girls, that we can be with God is through through the forgiveness of our sins, you know? And Jesus knew that. And so he came down to earth um, to show God's love, boys and girls, um, 
And as he grew, as Jesus grew, um, he began teaching everyone that he, Jesus, um, is the only way to get past um, to get past our sins or to be forgiven for our sins um, and be back with God and be reconciliated with God. You know, um, and boys and girls. Um, so when Jesus was walking the earth and he began um, to tell everyone that he was the only way, you know, um, to God, there was um, the religious leaders, you know, um, of, of that time, um, they began to get very jealous of Jesus. And so they decided um, that Jesus was getting too popular amongst the people. So they arrested Jesus, you know, and, um, and they sentenced him to die on a cross. That was his punishment. That was Jesus's punishment for for um, is for for sharing his love and for telling people, you know, that he was the only way to, to heaven. And so, um, Jesus was nailed to the cross in order that, you know, he was nailed to the cross to pay for our sins, to pay for all the wrong that we've done. Um, he was perfect. He was perfect in every way. He had never sinned, um, and yet, you know. He took our place on that cross. It's really us. It was really us who should have been on that cross, but he he took all the sins of the world upon himself and died on that cross for us, boys and girls. Um, but guess what? Three days later, um, well, he was buried, and then three days later, Jesus rose from the dead. So he was alive, and he rose up into heaven, and he is still there till this very day. And so he came to earth, boys and girls, to die on the cross so that you and I could be forgiven, you know. And he continues to walk with us every single day um, through the troubles um, that we face in our life. He is Emmanuel, boys and girls. And now before we go into our lesson about why we call him Emmanuel, um, let's go over a power verse. And so it's found in Matthew 1 verse 23 and it reads like this the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel which means God with us so Emmanuel means God God with us and so um, yeah that's our power verse uh, Matthew chapter 1 verse 23 and so boys and girls today we're gonna learn um, about another word um, that the Bible uses to, to describe Jesus and it's Emmanuel you know, which means God with us. And the Bible uses the word Emmanuel to describe Jesus because, boys and girls, He didn't have to leave heaven to come to us. He didn't have to leave heaven. You know, um, He had everything. He has everything that He needs and, and wants. And, um, you know, He's the King of the universe. He literally has the whole world in His hands, the whole universe in His hands. He created the universe. And so, he didn't have to leave heaven to come to us, to come rescue us, to come die for us, you know, um, so that or, so that we could be forgiven. You know, he had he has angels in heaven that that can serve his every need. You know, um, there's no worries in heaven, no problems, no violence, no wars, no sin, no danger, and yet he left everything that is perfect. You know, he left a, a perfect place come to us, boys and girls, to come to die for us, you know, um, he loved us so much, and he loves us so much, and he loves us enough, and he loved us enough, boys and girls, to leave, um, that perfect place, you know, um, to come to earth, where we have so much sin, and so much sadness, and so much trouble, and so much pain, and so not only did he leave heaven to come to us, boys and girls, um, he came for us. He came um, because He's the only way. He's the only way that we can be forgiven of our sins. You know, He's the only way that we can be saved from our sin. So He knew that He had to leave heaven to come to earth, to to die on a cross, to pay for the price of my sin, of, of your sin, of, of the sins of the world. And so, boys and girls, you, you are the reason. You, me, we are the reason, boys and girls. Jesus came to this earth and so isn't that amazing that he loves us he loves us so much that um, you know he just loves us that much that he was willing to die for us he died for us 
for our sins, for all the wrong that we've done, even though he was perfect, was there was uh, nothing to blame him for. You know, he was perfect in every way and he still is, you know. And so boys and girls, um, he loves you and everybody you know in this entire world. He loves this entire world. And so that is why we celebrate Christmas, boys and girls. Um, Christmas time um, was the beginning of Jesus' time on earth. That's, you know, when when he was born. And so it began with a baby in manger, but it didn't end there. You know, it continued throughout the life of Jesus as he performed miracles and showed people God's love. And it continued through his arrest and his death on the cross. And it continued even further when he rose from the dead three days later. You know, and the story continues today, boys and girls, um, as Jesus is in heaven and he wants every single person to receive the gift that he has for them, which is forgiveness and the gift of eternal life. You know? And boys and girls, he continues to walk with us in our everyday life um, through the troubles of this world. And so you see, boys and girls, Jesus is always with you. If you make him the savior, of your heart, if you make him your Lord and your Savior, the King of your heart, he will always, always, always be with you, boys and girls, always be by your side. So Jesus had said himself, you know, surely I am always with you. And, you know, we can trust God's word because it's, it's 100% true. You know, he's always with us till the very end, boys and girls. And so that means that when you're worried, when you're afraid, um, in any problem in life that you could be facing, you know, um, maybe your parents are fighting or boys and girls, maybe you're feeling alone because this has been a difficult year and maybe you haven't been, you know, um, you haven't made friends in school. Jesus is with you, boys and girls, no matter what, he, he, he's with you. And so um, we don't have to face anything alone. We really don't, you know. Um, he has promised that he'll always be with us. And that is why we call him, or that is why he is called Emmanuel in the Bible, because he is God with us. God is with us, you know? And he came to us. He came to us from heaven. He came for us from heaven, boys and girls. And, you know, he will always be with us no matter what. So boys and girls, um, let's go over our power verse today. And it's found, remember, in Matthew uh, 1, verse 23. And I reads like this. The virgin um, will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And so, like I said before, if you have Jesus in your heart, you make him king of your heart, boys and girls, then he will always be with you. Oh, boys and girls, so my prayer for you today um, is that if you're facing tough situations, um, that you just uh, put it in Jesus' hands, you know, and allow Him to give you the strength and the wisdom to, uh, uh, you know, to get, and the comfort, really, to get through these tough situations, you know. Um, just remember that God is with you. He's always with you. Um, and let's just thank Him, you know. Let's, let's just thank Him for his sacrifice to come to earth and to pay for, for my sins and for your sins so that we don't have to be punished uh, for all the wrong that we've done, right? Um, that's really, that's really, um, that's really it, boys and girls. That, um, he loved us so much that he died for us, you know? He suffered the consequences of our sins so that we wouldn't have to, you know? We will, if, if we choose to reject Him, if we choose to live without Him, we will suffer the consequences of our sin, um, you know, which is a, um, eternal hell. Um, but if we live for Him, if we make Him the, the King of our hearts, then we are forgiven for some those. And so um, this concludes uh, the lesson that we've been uh, learning about, you know, Jesus, Jesus is. And I hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope that you've learned something. I hope that um, through this series, you've learned how much God loves you and how much, um, just how much we need Him. We, we 
need Him in, in our lives, right? And I and I pray that um, through this series, maybe you've um, accepted Jesus in your heart as your Lord and your Savior, and that um, uh, day by day, maybe you're learning a little bit more about Him. And I hope that you have a Merry Christmas, boys and girls, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.